All right, welcome to this tutorial on contour drawing. So here's my example here. I've gotten these images from lineofaction.com, and here is the actual uh, drawings that I did from this. And you can see the contour drawing essentially is the outline. Uh, literally, that's the, the meaning of it, the French word. It literally means outline like a cartoon of the figure. And the, the concept here, the idea behind this, is to focus on the outline so that you're able to start to see how the figure um, basically looks based upon you know mass density, uh, bone, muscle, fat, all those different things. And you're able to see that in the lines of the outline of the figure. So, um, and then you're eventually gonna do a blind contour drawing, which again, here's some photos I use for the blind contour and I'll show you the example here. The blind contour, the, the, very, the difference basically is this, that uh, you're not looking at the paper that you're drawing on. So what will happen is you're carefully drawing what you see in terms of the contours, but you're uh, not looking on the paper. You're basically holding the pencil to paper and drawing with a continuous line without looking at it. So what tends to happen is you get this Picasso-esque quality of uh, figures collapsing in on itself and parts you know, not making quite sense, and it's all okay because this is exercise. You're training your eyes to see the outlines of the figure. And proportions and other things will, will come to part when we get to gesture drawing. So in the beginning here, we're just kind of feeling the figure. We're trying to figure that out. And the more practice you have with this, the better your, your figure drawings will be. So here's a, a demo that I'll do here. But basically, this male figure here, you can see I've added some red lines on the photo. And you can see those are the contours that we're gonna try and describe here on the, the side. And uh, the contours, you know, basically define, again, it's like the outline, but it is defining the real form of the figure. So uh, for example, the bicep muscles, as if I start there, I can start to see, you know, it is a real curve here, you know, that rounds off and there's a little dip. And then you have like the tricep as it comes down and then you have this sort of flatter area here, I'll kind of point to it here and here, which is the elbow, right? So basically that's what I'm doing there. And you try and draw a contour with a sort of continuous line. You don't, you don't try not to erase and it's okay to make some mistakes. The idea here is you're not making a perfect drawing, but training your eye to get into that idea of you know, looking at the overall form and deciding like what is going on there in terms of that bicep or in this case, the um, the, the lower arm here. And if, if you make a mistake, you can go back over it kind of to change it a little bit. So that's what I've done here. I've noticed this goes in a little bit more. And then uh, the bicep here has a nice big curve. And I'm working on a, a Cintiq here. So I'm recording this so you can kind of see as I'm drawing here. Uh, the actual contours, but basically, you know, you're just breaking down each part and you want to draw in a more confident sort of continuous line. Uh, even if it's a little bit off or not the best, it's okay because you're training your eye to see in terms of line. And it takes time and practice. So don't expect to be perfect results in the beginning. Uh, even mine, and I, I've drawn a lot and throughout my years, but like my drawing here, uh, after the third one, I, I kind of felt like I was getting more comfortable drawing. But even after that, I was like, oh, I just haven't drawn in a while. And it takes practice, even someone who has drawn a lot. So hang in there. Don't, don't freak out or anything. Um, try not to get, we all want to add more details. We all want to have these, you know, more perfect drawings. You know, we're our own risk, worst critics in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, what you want to do is, is look at it as terms of if it's not correct, you can change it. And getting that, that, that mindset of not being a complete failure, but being a, a work in progress. I always think of drawing as a process. So it's, it's something that's like, if it's not quite right, I'm just going to go back in and change things and move things around. And uh, with contour drawing, you're just not wasting time erasing. So if something's not quite right, I just redraw a different line. And I can go back over later on and do some erasing. But um, now I am drawing a little bit of some of the facial features here. 
With contour, you can add a little bit of the inside parts, but basically a straight up contour is primarily outline. So you don't want to add like, for example, you don't want to sit there and be like, like a comic artist and do like, you know, shading with lines or something like that, right? So that wouldn't be a good idea. I'll undo that. Um, you want to have this continuous flowing line. Think of it like you're, an, I always use the analogy of like an ant or a Martian from another planet and the planet is the body and you're just kind of exploring it and trying to figure out how it's connected and how the parts work. Um, and you know, you're gonna get things right, some parts and other parts you're gonna get wrong. Like here, I just noticed that from this hand, uh, the, the figures, uh, this hand here needs to come out further. So I'm gonna change that and then now I'll have a spot here to have this pathway of his chest and then the spot for the arm to come out. A lot of times with the contour drawing you're also looking at the negative space. So uh, this is the negative space, the space in between here. So this area here that I'm shading in right now, that's the negative space. Negative space is all this over here. Right, so this is the pauses. The positive space would basically be the figure itself. So those are the positive area. So being really attentive to that that negative shape there of what that arm looks like is very important. Now I'm not rotating the canvas as I'm drawing this because I'm recording this tutorial, so it's a little bit harder for my, my arm to kind of move into that position. But if I was drawing this on paper, I'd be rotating the paper to uh, shift around and then if I was drawing digitally I would I would rotate too just to show you what that looked like um, I can basically click on here and rotate the canvas and this is so much easier for me to get in a more confident pose for my hand to draw the correct contour on here and figure this out so I'll kind of make that line a little bit thicker and darker but this is basically how you go around and just Train your eye on seeing the outline uh, of the form of the figure. I'm going to go ahead and um, reset this though. I will bring it back. There we go. So you can see it a little easier. And so basically, you just pretty much keep going with this with the contour. You can have the line kind of come in a little bit in certain areas, like the pictorial muscles. I could show you know a little bit of the line there. But, and I, I could even show, you know, a little bit there, but I, again, you don't want to go too far with it. You don't want to spend time, like, doing shading of any kind. Uh, contour line drawing isn't about that at all. So, um, and it's, it's, a, it's an activity that's done very slow. That's the other thing you want to be aware of. Because you're training your eye, you're going back and forth. So, like, I'm looking at this line here, and I'm looking here, but I'm also looking at, the space between here and here, which is the space between here and here. And so my eye, I'm kind of training that as I'm looking, as I'm drawing the contour of his underwear here. So it goes down here. And then, like I'm noticing, and this is something that we'll get into more and more, but the figure is, is very much about asymmetry even though we think of the figure as being very symmetrical. So there are these curves that come out, like the, the bicep um, that rounds in, but then there's like a tuck area that happens right here, a pinch, uh, where the tricep comes out, right? And then same here with the bicep. And they're, they're kind of opposite of each other. So you get more of that asymmetry. So the, the leg here muscles, I probably need to pull that out a little bit more and then come down and get to the knee there. So uh, basically, I would come around here, and, and you can jump around in a couple areas. Like, I want to add, I forgot to add the eyes, so I can add that in there. Um, if I thought the mouth needed to go up a little bit higher, I could change that. And if you do want to spend a little bit of time erasing, you're welcome to do that, but don't overly do it. Um, the idea here isn't to spend time erasing. So you don't want to be like, oh, I want to erase this line and make it perfect, or this line and make it perfect, or that line. It's okay to have some of that history there. So even this line, I can leave it a little bit wider. That's why I was going heavier. And when I draw on paper, 
I pretty much do that. I, I just use it through pressure. I will draw like um, my lines will be like this light, like even lighter than that in terms of the, the, the lightness. And then as I get more confident with it, I'll go darker and heavier and heavier. So just be aware of that in terms of the drawing. But that's basically it. That's how you continue, uh, you know, the whole path. You basically just want to go all around the figure and finish up. I'll just do a little bit more maybe on this hand here and then the other hand just, just so some more complexity. Uh, again, the digits don't have to be absolutely perfect. You're not necessarily like drawing every little wrinkle or every little part of the finger. And if it gets a little loopy, you can kind of go back over it. And again, I, I'm getting quiet here for a time because I was kind of focusing. I'm noticing that these uh, digits need to come out more. Just looking at the proportions. And if you're noticing proportions are off, we are going to focus on that later on. But if you feel free and, and try and change on your own. See if, if something is a little bit, you know, things, you, you kind of naturally see if things are too short, too tall, uh, too wide, too skinny. We usually can perceive those kind of things. Not always, but a lot of times we can. And with practice and practice, you'll start to know that. You know, like for example, the the bicep muscle here. I mean, sorry, the the tricep muscle here. Uh, I noticed it was it was caved in more, so I added that thicker line to kind of push it out a little bit more. And so um, a lot of these contours, I can do that anywhere in here where I'm like, oh, I don't quite see in that here. Um, like this line of the hand is where the underwear ends and kind of tapers in there, and then the leg muscle comes down. And I just realized. This is too far out. It needs to go in further. It's actually closer to the pinky. So I'm going to change that line. And maybe that's a little bit too far in. So it's OK to change the line. You're basically just going along here and try your best at this. Try and spend about 15 minutes to as much as a half hour on each figure doing the contour drawings. And again, the, the three drawings on a sheet of paper 18 by uh, at least 18. Uh, Grant, I'd rather you work like 18 by 24, the larger sheets. But if you your larger sheet is like 12 by 18, that's okay. And um, if for some reason you're stuck, you don't have supplies this week for whatever reason, uh, work on whatever paper you have, but try and get up to those larger sizes. They really help when it comes to drawing. Um, so if this this is actually a document size, it's 18 by 24, even though it's a digital document. Um, and then uh, the blind contours again, they'll be um, they'll be a little strange in the beginning. You'll, you might have some laughs at the silliness, but if you're doing it right and really working slow, you know again you're going to spend 15 minutes to 30 minutes just try and and go around and go around it until you get the figure, the whole figure as much as you can. Now there's areas in here where I lost where I was at, and I just picked it up and. You know, I may have glanced slightly at it, but try not to really look at the paper as you're drawing. Really, really, uh, that's what's really key. Again, it's, it's training your eye to really look. When I, I explain this a lot that in the visual world of art, we don't look enough. Uh, and uh, I think if we were trained our eyes to really look more, we would see how wonderful the world really is and, and how amazing uh, everything can be in terms of uh, life itself. And just in a you know a, a sort of theoretical perspective, but there's tremendous things to look at in the world. And since this is a life drawing class, we're focusing on life drawing. We're essentially learning how to really see, uh, and, th and the skill can be in all kinds of things. I was just thinking about uh, like criminal justice, how uh, you know a, a detective would you know s zoom around the room and really look at the crime scene with immense detail. You know, we, we all have to figure out uh, how to train our eyes in doing things and seeing things in a new way. And, and this perception skills are not something that you're just automatically given. So there, there are no artists that are uh, like to call the genius artists. There are very few. There are a few genius artists here in the world. Um, but most of it is hard work. <laughs> I would say like... 99, even the geniuses work a lot. So most of it is just hard work, you know, um, lifting the weights, pumping the weights, you know, if you're trying to, to build mass on your body. 
It's the same thing with drawing. The more drawing you'll do, the better you're going to get at this. And this whole contour drawing concept is a really great exercise. To, uh, and you can practice it anywhere you want, pretty much working with uh, photographs. Obviously, when we're, we're working with a live model, uh, it, it's a little bit different in the sense that it is live model, so you can kind of move around the figure a little bit, and that's really nice. And that gets into a, a new technique later on that we're going to get into, which is called cage volume, which is a spinoff from cross contour drawing, which will be the, the next uh, demo tutorial that I'll cover in the future. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers.